Hi everyone, I'm Andy Neal and this is an in and out tutorial for Motion 5. This is part 2 of my replicator tutorial. If you haven't seen part 1, I suggest you check it out unless you're already very familiar with building replicators. For this tutorial, I'm going to show off one of my favorite behaviors to animate with. It's called the Sequence Replicator and it's got some great power behind it. We're starting with this graphic which we built in the previous tutorial by taking a single shape and replicating it six times. If you want to just pick up from there, download the Motion Project below which contains a version of this project. I've cleaned up the project a bit, mainly by placing all the text layers into their own group so that I can turn them off easily until I need them. Right now, I only want to worry about animating the replicator. With the replicator selected, go to the Behaviors button and then to Replicator. And there's only one behavior here. This is what you use when you want to animate the individual cells in your replicator. When first applied, no animation happens by default because you first have to define what parameters you want to animate. Now I want to animate the position of each wedge so that they fly into the position that they are in right now. In the Behaviors tab, go to the drop down for Parameter and you'll see the five parameters you can manipulate with this behavior. Choose Position. Immediately, a position parameter, just like you see in the Properties tab, shows up. This parameter can represent the starting point or the ending point for your animation. We're going to want to have it represent our starting point, since we want the wedges to end up as they currently are. I'm just going to drag on the X value here so I can show you how this behavior animates. Scrub through your timeline to see how this is working. Okay, a couple of things are pretty evident right off the bat. First of all, the length of the behavior is too long and the animation is too slow. The animation runs the full length of the behavior, so if you want the animation to move faster, you need to make the behavior shorter. I'm just going to drag the end of it down to about, I don't know, I guess here. And then I'm going to set a play range by hitting Command Option O just on the outside of this behavior. Let's play it and see how it looks. Okay, that's better. I may want to change it later when we've got our animation nailed down, but for now it's fine. Next problem is the value that we changed in the behavior is not a starting point. It's actually an ending point. We can change this in the sequencing parameter. Right now it's set to 2. Change it to from if you want to reverse the animation. Also, you can change it to through if you want the wedges to move to the end point and then back to the starting point. It's kind of like combining the to and from selections. Through inverted, as you might guess, is the reverse of the through animation. And custom, I'm not really going to get into except to say that it's a way to animate the cells of a replicator if you've already animated the original layer you use to make the replicator. But what we want is from, so keep it there. Now, this animation was helpful to show how the parameters affect the replicator, but it's not the animation that I want. What I want is to animate their Z position. Twirl open the position parameter to reveal the Z value. Change the X value back to 0 because we don't want the animation going that direction at all. And drag a bit on the Z value. Something strange is happening. For some reason, changing the Z parameter seems to have no effect at all on our replicator. This is because our replicator is by default a 2D replicator. If you want to be able to move the individual cells in Z space, then you need to make your replicator 3D. Go to the Replicator tab, and right here is a little checkbox for 3D. Click it, and now it shows the Z position changes that we made. I'm going to loop this animation while I clean it up. First, I want the wedges to fly from off screen, so I need my start position to be much higher than it is. Adjust the Z position until the wedges are all starting off frame. Next thing I want to do is adjust the timing a bit. I want to experiment with the animation being a bit slower, so I'm just going to drag the behavior out a bit. Make sure to drag the out point of your play range as well so that you can see the entire animation. This seems pretty good. But I also feel like the wedges are flying at too consistent a rate. Go to the traversal parameter 
and change it from constant speed to ease out. Now, as you can see, the animation is faster at the beginning and then slows down towards the end. You can experiment with different traversals if you like. It's important to note that the easing that's happening here is happening over the course of the entire animation. Motion isn't easing the animation of each cell, it's easing the animation of all the cells together. So sometimes changing the traversal helps, and other times it just doesn't look right. For me, it's just not quite there yet. I'm going to lengthen the behavior a little more to slow down the animation. Okay, that looks better, but I'm still not quite there. Go to the spread control. Spread is used to smooth out the animation. Higher numbers increase smoothing, while lower numbers decrease smoothing. You can even set the spread to zero, which will cause your cells to jump to their final positions without animating from point A to point B. Change the spread to about three, and now you can see how much smoother that animation just got. Maybe I'll even shorten the behavior a little bit now, because I, th I think the smoothness has really helped. What I wanted to demonstrate is that many of these parameters affect other parameters, so you may need to do a little bit of tweaking to get the animation that you're looking for, which is why real-time playback capability of motion is very helpful in figuring that out. Now, there are two more things that need to happen. We have to add our text, and we have to spin the entire graphic. The text I've written out already in this group, and I'm now going to turn it back on. But the text isn't part of the replicator animation, and so I don't want the individual layers of text to appear until its corresponding wedge has animated into place. Scrub in the timeline to where the first wedge starts to land in place. It doesn't have to finish its animation, and in fact, it's better if it hasn't, but make sure that the wedge is at least acting as a background for the text. Select the text layer and hit I on the keyboard to set its endpoint. Scrub forward in the timeline and do the same for all the text layers. Shouldn't really take you very long, it only takes a couple of seconds. Just, just scrubbing forward in the timeline, select your new text layer, and hit I on the keyboard. Once you've finished, select the first text layer again and go to Behaviors, Basic Motion, Fade In, Fade Out. In the Behaviors tab, change the fade out time to zero because we only want the text to fade in and then change the fade in time to maybe five or six. Let's, let's try six. Now, instead of adding and adjusting the same behavior to all our text layers, select the behavior in the layers tab and holding down option, drag the behavior to the next layer. What this does is it copies the behavior with all its adjustments to the new layer. This way, you can quickly add the same exact fade to each text layer in a fraction of the time. Great. All that's left is the spinning of the graphic. I saved this until last because the spin has to affect both the replicator and the text, so we can't just rotate the replicator. However, we also can't just rotate the group containing the text and the replicator because you won't get the result that you're looking for. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Place the playhead a little bit past the end of the replicator animation, and then go up to the layers pane. Here's the group that contains the replicator and the text. In the Properties tab, click on the Animation menu beside the Rotation parameter and choose Add Parameter Behavior Ramp. Set the end value for the ramp at 4 and crank up the curvature to about 100%. Then hit Command 8 to open up the keyframe editor so you can see the animation line for this behavior. Change the end offset value until the line flattens out about where the playhead is. So far so good. Now hit play. See how the text gets all garbled up? This is because the ring layer I used as the path layout for the text back in the first tutorial is spinning inside this group and it's changing how the text gets written out. Now I can take the ring layer out of this group by dragging it above and dropping it. This creates its own group and that fixed the dumbled text problem, but now the text isn't being affected at all by the spinning group. See, this is because when you use a shape to format how text is written out, that's all that matters to the text. 
it's not going to change its position even if the group that it's inside is moving. So our solution to this problem is to use a clone layer. Select the text group and hit K on the keyboard to clone the group. Then drag the text group out of the group it started in and put it in the group with the circle path. And you can even turn off this group because it's no longer needed. You see the clone acts as a flattened layer and it spins just like it should along with the replicator and the rest of the group. And also, if you need to make changes to the text, you can go in our text layer, make the changes that you want, and it will be updated in the clone layer. Okay, there you have it. Using replicators to create graphics and then animating them. This has been an in and out tutorial for Motion 5.